Good. Yeah. So there are two main themes today. One is about uh, uh, Supreme Lord showing uh, Mark and Rishi, uh, the annihilation, the Maya's uh, basically experience of Maya uh, through showing of the annihilation time like that. Number one. Number two, uh, he Supreme Lord shows his beautiful form of a uh, small baby also uh, in this section. Those are the two things we'll see today. So I think it's Hemang Mati. Whenever you're ready, you can start Mati. Okay, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All great to Sri Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Uh, today we are reading Kanta 12, Chapter 9, uh, Text 10 to 34. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskritam Naranchaiva Narotamam. Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tatojaya Mudiye. Nastapai Suavatri Sum Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavate Uttama Sloke Vakti Bhavati Nestiki. O Brahmana Saunaka, best of the Vrigus. One day, while Markande was performing his evening worship on the bank of the Puspavatra, a great wind suddenly arose. That wind created a terrible sound and brought into in its brought in in its wake fearsome clouds that were accompanied by lightning and roaring thunder, and that poured down all sides torrents of rain as heavy as wagon wheels. Then the four great oceans appear on all sides swelling up the surface of the earth with their winds tossed waves. In this ocean were terrible sea monsters, fearful whirlpools, and ominous rumbling. The sage saw all the inhabitants of the universe, including himself, tormented within and without by the harsh winds, the bowls of, the light, bowls of lightning, and the great waves rising beyond the sky. As the whole earth flooded, he grew perplexed and fearful. Even as Markande looked on, the rain pouring down from the clouds filled the ocean more and more until that great sea, its water violently whipped into terrifying waves by hurricanes, covered up all the earth's island, mountains, and continents. The water in, inundated the earth, outer space, heaven, and the celestial region. Indeed, the entire expanse of the universe was flooded in all direction, and out of all in all its inhabitants, only Mark and Dare remained. His matted hair scattered. The great states wander about alone in the water, as if dumb and blind, tormented by the hunger and thirst, attacked by monstrous makaras and timingala fish, and battered by the wind and waves, he moved aimlessly through the infinite darkness into which he had fallen. As he grew increasingly exhausted, he lost all sense of direction and could not tell the sky from the earth. At times he was engulfed by the great whirlpools. Sometimes he was eaten by the mighty waves and and at other times, the aquatic monster threatened the devour him as they attacked one another. Sometimes he felt lamentation, bewilderment, misery, happiness, or fear. And at other times, he experienced such terrible illness and pain that he felt himself dying. Countless millions of years passed as Markande wandered about in that indul in that deluge his mind bewildered by the illusionary energy of Lord Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Once while wandering in the water, the Brahmanas Markandil discovered a small island upon which stood a young banyan tree bearing blossom and fruits. Upon a branch of the northeast portion of that tree, he saw an infant boy lying within the leaf. The child in effulgence was swallowing up the darkness. The infant's dark blue complexion was the color of the flawless emerald. His lotus face shone with a wealth of beauty, and his throat bore marked like the lines of an cell. He had a broad chest, a finely shaped nose, 
beautiful eyebrows and lovely ears that resembled pomegranate flowers and that had inner fold like a conch cell spirals. The corner of his eyes were reddish like the roar of the lotus and the effulgence of his coral like lips slightly reddened the nectarian, enchanting smiling on his face. As he breathed, his splendid hair trembled on his deep navel, become distorted by the moving folds of skin on his abdomen, which resembled a banyan leaf. The exalted Brahmana was watching, uh, watched the, with amazement as the infant took hold of one of his lotus feet with his graceful finger, placed, to, placed a toe within his mouth and began to suck. As Markandya beheld the child, all his weariness vanished. Indeed, so great was his pleasure that the lotus of his heart, along with his lotus eye, fully blossomed and the hairs of his body stood on end. Confused as the identity of the wonderful infant, the sage approached him. Just then the child inhaled, drawing Markandeya within his body like a mosquito. There the sage found the entire universe arrayed as it, and it had been before its dissolution. So seeing this, seeing this Markandeya was most astonished and perplexed. The sages saw the entire universe, the sky, heavens, and earth, the star, mountains, ocean, great island, and continent, the expanse in every direction, the saintly and dominant living beings, the forests, the con countries, rivers, cities, and mines, the agricultural villages, and cow pasture, and the occupational and spiritual activities of the various social divisions. He also saw the basic elements of creation along with all their byproducts, as well as time himself, as time itself, which regulates the progression of countless ages within the days of Brahmana. In addition, he saw everything else created for use in material life. All this he saw manifested before him as if it were real. He saw before him the Himalaya mountain, the Puspavhadra river, and his own hermitage, where he had had the audience of the sage Naranahaya. Then as Markandeya beheld the entire universe, the infant exhaled, expelling the sage from his body and casting him back into the ocean of dissolution. In that vast sea, he again saw the banyan tree growing on the tiny island and the infant boy laying within the leaf. The child glanced at him from the corner of his eye with a smile imbued with the, with the nectar of love. And Markandeya took him, his heart through his eyes. Greatly agitated, the sage ran in to embrace the transcendental personality of Godhead. At the moment, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the original master of all mysticism and who is hidden within everyone's heart, became invisible to the saints, just as the achievement of an incompetent person can suddenly vanish. After the Lord disappeared, O Brahmana, the Banyan tree, the great water, and the dissolution of the, all, of the, dissolution of the universe all vanished as well as and in an instant, Markandeya found his, himself back in his own hermitage just as before. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Yeah, thank you so much, Mathe. Hare Krishna. So, the context here uh, is that uh, we heard in the last chapter how Narayana Rishi appeared before Markandeya Rishi and he offered his prayers. And at the end of the prayers, uh, after the prayers, um, Supreme Lord requested him to take benediction from him like that. He asked him to take a benediction. Then Mark and Rishi initially said, uh, I'm so happy, uh, I'm, much, I'm so fortunate that I got your darshan. That itself is a great benediction. But however, uh, I do have one desire, that is to see your illusory potency. That means your Maya potency, uh, like that he requested. So that's where, and then he started continuing his, um, uh, after that Supreme Lord disappeared and he continued his devotion service with that desire in mind. That's what we heard so far. So now going to the 10th verse. Uh, 
So Markande was one day evening while he was performing his evening worship on the bank of Pushpabhadra river. A great wind suddenly arose, it seems. So this verse on words, what is going to describe is the uh, like a pralaya, like an inhalation time. That description is coming up basically next set of verses till 19th verse, till about nine verses more. So basically that wind, there is a lot of wind with terrible sound is described in the 11th verse. And then uh, fearsome clouds came with a lot of lightning and a lot of roaring sounds. And then uh, rain was pouring down, uh, torrents of rain was pouring down as heavy as wagon wheels is described, interestingly. Uh, in the 10th canto description of Govardhan Lila, what we hear about is the, the rain is coming as if like pillars uh, were falling down like that. Drops of rain is like pillars like that is described. Here the description is as heavy as wagon wheels uh, like that is described here. It was so big basically. Then... Uh, Everywhere it was surrounded with water, it is described as surrounding. And uh, there were terrible sea monsters in the vast water, fearful whirlpools were there. Uh, and then say saw that all the inhibitions, you know, irrespective of the type of you, the type of living entity. Uh, purport clarifies the four types of living entities that come from embryo, like human beings, for example, that comes from uh, what is it called? Eggs. Like birds, for example, are that come living beings that come from seeds, like plants and trees, and then living beings that come from perspiration or sweat, the small microbes like that. So all kinds of living beings you saw uh, tormented within and out uh, that harsh winds, it seems, and bolts of lightning, and then great waves were rising beyond the sky like that. Uh, so much water is there everywhere. Whole earth was flooded. And he grew perplexed and fearful. So this is a glimpse of suffering kind of thing he experienced um, because he wanted to experience Maya. So you'll see that uh, in the next few verses. So while Markande was looking on, Rishi was looking on, um, rain was pouring down more and more like that until everything covered up all the islands, mountains and continents like that. Everything was covered up. So notice everything was covered up. And then later on, we'll hear about one island is there like that. That becomes Supreme Lord. Okay, So everything is covered up now. So now text 15, uh, the water inundated the earth, outer space, heaven and celestial region like that. Uh, everywhere it was flooded with water only and out of all, out of all the nibblings, only Mark and Day remained. How come Mark and Day remained even though such big devastation is happening? Because he got the benediction of a high, long lifetime. That is why he could stay even in this extraordinary circumstances. Normally, ordinary living beings cannot stay like that. And then he was also tormented by hunger and thirst, is described. And is attacked by monstrous mak makaras and thimingla fish. Makaras is described in the word for word meaning as a species of monster crocodiles. So sometimes uh, when we see Krishna's picture also, ears are, uh, makara earrings are described for Krishna also. So, and then Timingla fish is the one huge fish that eat, can eat whales, it seems. And then um, battered by the winds and waves, he moved aimlessly. It was everywhere is dark, no light everywhere, anywhere like that. And um, he grew increasingly exhausted as he lost the sense of direction. He could not tell what is the sky, what is the earth, like that. So much water everywhere, like that. Uh, at times, he was also engulfed by great whirlpools. He was beaten by waves. And aquatic monsters threatened to devour him as they attacked one another. Sometimes he felt these different symptoms. He felt lamentation, bewilderment, misery, happiness, or fear, it seems. And other times, he felt terrible illness and pain that he felt himself dying like that. So much suffering he experienced for a short time. And then countless millions of years has passed, it seems, as Mark and I wandered about in that deluge. His mind bewildered by the illusory energy of Lord Vishnu, the Supreme Person of the Godhead. So we know uh, usually the day of, day of Lord Brahma is like uh, one kalpa, which is also called, which is like thousand Divya Yugas. Similarly, night time is also 1000 Divya Yugas. So that means it's just such a long time. That's why it's saying millions of years have passed. 
So that much time during which annihilation happens like that. Now going to the next verse, 20th verse. So then now here the discussion shifts from the great Pralaya to his vision of a beautiful child form of Krishna like that. That's where this shifting. You probably seen the picture that uh, Palmatha is also shared in the uh, chat. And also it is there in the, I was also sharing briefly in the picture. I can also share briefly with that one, one more time. That, uh, yeah, this is the form of the Supreme Lord he saw is described. So basically, Markande Rishi discovered a small island, it seems. Remember, early discussion was mountains also were submerged. Now here we are hearing, still one small island was intact. Because Supreme Lord can do anything. So he manifested that small island for showing this Leela. And then there was a young banyan tree bearing blossoms and fruits, it seems. Normally, such a devastation, there's nothing will remain. Trees are, trees are everything is floating, everything is uh, wiped off. But this tree is still intact uh, because for this Leela. Uh, basically, it is blossoming with fruits and flowers, it seems. And then, and the, it's described in the next verse, northeast portion of the tree, he saw an infant boy lying within a leaf, banyan leaf. And the child's effulgence was uh, taking away all the darkness from all directions like that. Then the next four verses indicate the beauty of Lord Krishna. It says the infant's dark blue complexion was the color of a flawless emerald. I was looking up, uh, basically emerald is normally green color. So, but here is saying dark blue complexion. Even Vishwanath Chakravata commentary also says the same thing. Dark blue is com complexion and he compares with emerald, Maha Marakata, like that. That's the Sanskrit word used. Apparently, emerald also has a bluish, uh, bluish uh, tint, it seems. Bluish tint, yellowish tint, like that also comes with emerald. Or, even though overall it's green color, like that. Then it's a lotus face is described with a wealth of beauty and his throat has a lines of corn shell like the way Damodar Ashtakam defines, describes also. And a broad chest, finely shaped nose, beautiful eyebrows and lovely ears that resembled pomegranate flowers. So here the word translation itself is saying ears are resembling like pomegranate flowers. And still Vishwanath Chakrata commentary which is uh, indicated in the purport also. Oh no, that's not here. That point is not here. In the Burjana Prabhu's book, book Vishwanath Chikrata commentary indicates that how Lord was also um, dec ears was decorated with pomegranate flowers. Pomegranate flowers, you might know, is very beautiful, like reddish color, um, beautiful color. It will be there. Like that, they decorated seems. And then uh, the eyes, corners of his eyes were reddish like the wall of a lotus, it seems. And these uh, lips are compared like coral-like lips with slightly red, red in the nectar, it seems. Enchanting smile he was having on his face. And uh, as he breathed, the, his splendid hair trembled. And his deep navel and abdomen was like resembled a banyan leaf, it seems. So this whole this Mark and Rishi was observing this beautiful form of Supreme Lord Krishna and with amazement it seems and um, what he was doing at that time he took hold of one of his lotus feet with his graceful fingers and placed the toe within his mouth and began to suck his describe. So this is where Vishnu Chakrata commentary is very purport that what was Krishna thinking like that. He is thinking so how many devotees are hankering for the nectar of my lotus feet Therefore, let me personally experience that nectar like that. That's what he's thinking. He's stretching that toe, basically. Uh, that is what is described by Vishnu Chakra Thakur. And then, in the 26th verse, uh, as Mark and Deya was behold, seeing that child, um, all his weariness, that means all his tiredness, everything vanished, it seems. Because the beautiful form of Krishna is seeing. Uh, he, was, he was so pleased. That is lotus of his heart, along with his lotus eyes, fully blossomed, and the hairs on his hair, on his body stood on end. That means he was in ecstatic symptoms like that time. Then he was he was wondering who is this, who is this infant boy like that? He was trying to approach him close to them. Then that time uh, Krishna inhaled him inside, 
so he went inside the body of uh, Margaret Devi. She went inside the body of Krishna. It seems, and then like a mosquito is described. Then uh, the sage found the entire universe inside the body of Krishna. So before the dissolution, how it was like that? He saw everything is there inside the body of Krishna. Then he was very astonished and perplexed. It seems. Then Markin Rishi saw the entire universe with all the different things like sky, heavens, earth, mountains, all the th different things described. Cow pastures, villages, agricultural lands, mines. Uh, he saw the basic elements of creation along with the byproducts and the time itself. He saw everything created for use in material life. All he saw, all he saw manifested before him as if it were real, it seems. Then he even saw his own ashrama, uh, Pushpambandara river, and his own hermitage, uh, where he had the audience of the sages Naranarana. Mm. Then, while he was looking like that, the infant excelled again. So Krishna put him outside again, back to the waters and everything. And uh, the ocean of dissolution, he was back in that place. And he again saw the banyan tree growing in the tiny island, and the infant boy lying within the leaf, it seems. And the chained child Krishna glanced at him from the corner of his eyes with a smile imbued with the nectar of love. And Markandeya took him into the heart through his eyes, it seems. So greatly agitated, the sage ran to embrace the transgender person of Godhead. He ran to embrace uh, Krishna. At that moment, Krishna actually became invisible to the sage. Uh, so next, uh, the last verse for this chapter. After the uh, Krishna in the baby form disappeared, O Brahmana, um, the banyan tree, the great water, and the dissolution of the universe all vanished as well. And in an instant, Mark and I found himself back in his own hermitage just as before. So he manifested the entire vision of Maya to dissolution. And then he came back to the same place he was there. With everything is like normal again, like that. That's how this chapter ends. So we'll continue in the next chapter where we'll hear Lord Shiva and Uma glorify Mark and Rishi. That's the next chapter. So we'll pause here. Srimad Bhautam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Let's offer obeisance to all the devotees of the Lord. Vancha Garpataru Besha Kupasandu Bevacha Padizanam Pavani Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namanamaha. Thank you so much, devotees. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna.